Welcome back, Slam Picks Cruise Control episode 11. We are right here on Big TMD. As always, another week, another round of 205 Live as we've gone. And you know what? Better week. And before we get to any of that, as always, my co host for this, my lovely doll babies, as usual, trudging through. But this week, we didn't have to trudge through as much. It was just a good, 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 well, it's a good episode. First, Slits, as she's come to be known. Um, slam tits, whatever you guys want to know, <laughs> at Miss March 89, Kristen, welcome back, how was your week, what's going on? Uh, week's been eventful, to say the least, but no, other than that, not too bad, just work, and shit, but yeah, that Working looks so hard great. alongside Vincent and Beverly and all your co-workers. And Beverly, and Colleen, the lesbian, I'm sorry, Jesus Christ. <sighs> but yeah, good to have uh, you back, welcome uh, back to Cruise Control, and of course... You. The man behind Future Wrestling Podcast with the brand new co-host Broski from First Thing in the Morning, Logan Myers. What's going on, my friend? Welcome back to Cruise Control. How was your week, Pally? It's been great. I'm excited. Uh, last week was probably my best podcast, so I'm I'm trying to I'm going to try to one up it this week. You had the hot takes last week for sure. Yep. I guess I did. <laughs> and now you're like, yep. I did. <laughs> so, Logan, where can everyone check you out, Future Wrestling, all that good stuff you do on the internet real quick before you start? Well, you can check me out on Twitter at Logan Myers 144 Check out me and Broski on Future Wrestling Podcast on YouTube. Just search it, subscribe, like, and watch our fantastic videos. And don't miss Old School next week with uh, me, Broski, Kristen, Travis, and Mike from the Slam Pigs Podcast. As we break down the history of SummerSlam. I like how every name you sound enthusiastic about until you said me like and Travis. And Mike. So <laughs> that's my favorite part. But yeah, next week, check me out. My debut and Kristen's on the Future Wrestling Podcast. Get over there. Hit subscribe. Great show. Especially with Bruce going now. Man, you guys just compliment each other so well. And I'm excited for you guys. Big things happening. You guys keep growing more and more every day. But speaking of Twitter, speaking of things you do on Twitter, Logan. How'd the polls go this week, my friend? <laughs> uh, well, we only had one poll for this week, and and yes, uh, and everybody fought over it. <laughs> and it was, are you a fan of Drew Gulak? Um, before I answer and give everybody the um, the breakdown on who, uh, what the answers, uh, the final results was, Travis and Kristen, what did you guys vote? Did you guys vote yes, no, yes, want to see more of, or no, take him off TV? Travis, you can go first. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Um, really, really. Did you think I'd vote no on this, Logan? Me. No. No, I voted yes. I need more Gulak. He's been missing in action like the past two or three weeks, it feels like. I need more Gulak in my life. Bring him back. What are you doing? But yeah, I voted yes. And what about you? I... God, Travis is going to kill me. I voted no, get him off TV. Honestly, I feel... Well, I'm, I'm hitting the red better. button on Kristen's Skype no! call. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. If we, uh, hey, if we all agreed, I say it all the time, if we all agreed on everything, it'd be a boring-ass show every week. So, go ahead. The only reason I said no is because I don't really feel the gimmick he's got going right now is doing anything for anybody, including him. Like, if WWE actually sat there and thought of an actual creative gimmick for him... I may change my tune, but right now it's going to be a this is, this is terrible from you, Kristen. This gimmick is so different. His gimmick is way different than, than, than any gimmick that's been given to a lot of guys lately. It's different. It just it brings back old, old school. The no fly thoughts. zone. He sounds like he's a fucking like 9 11 terrorist attack officer. No fly zone. He sounds, yeah. like, the, I, he sounds like, like an IRS. He sounds like freaking <gasps> Richards back in the day. Whatever you are smoking, I want some. You must be smoking something because uh, your your opinions tonight is just terrible. Well, if we if we if we have oh one smoking pole, so my man. I'm like, so like I'm gonna. Terrible. I'm, I'm waiting on her to bite back. I'm just sitting here like with like invisible popcorn. So all I can hear right now is Logan is fucking the South Park skit. 
fucking back and forth. I think I know the answer, Mr. Garrison. Me, 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 That's all I hear right now. Yeah. In all seriousness, I, I got to agree with Logan. The, nobody else is doing this kind of gimmick. I think the problem with it, and I think, Logan, you'll probably agree, because I think we've talked about this on an episode way back. It's it, We'd like to see it on a SmackDown or somewhere. I think on 205 Live, yeah, it's fine. But we'd like to see him branch out with this more. And I think, like, a, yep. guy, like, a guy like Harper, when a big guy dives, bring out Gulak, say, no, you're a big guy, you don't need to do it. I think do there's a lot more. you say when a big guy do. dies or dives? D- dive. I don't want to see Luke Harper die. He's awesome. I swear to God, I should take, I should show you guys a picture of my uncle because he literally, my uncle and Luke Harper look exactly the same. Does your uncle dive? He, uh, that I don't know. Probably. <laughs> Go ahead, Luke. <laughs> Might dive into food. That's about it. <laughs> well, who wouldn't? Food is food. I love food. Um, especially cold cuts. Shout out to Michael. Um, <laughs> like that Shout out to Michael. Salami. God bless Michael. <laughs> I I seriously like uh, if he did branch out to like SmackDown, Raw, even, hell even NXT with that gimmick. Uh, he doesn't even need to like do the gimmick towards just faces. Like he could say it to like Kevin Owens. Mm-hmm. Like he could say it to like other guys like heels, faces. He could be like that in the middle type guy and i think it would work out perfectly for him this gimmick's this gimmick isn't terrible like i've seen worse like Brian why Kendrick. are you gonna do that to kevin owens like i think you just want broski to fucking throat punch you for that comment i will say at the end of the day this poll of any you've done so far has stirred up the most controversy as far as us on the show and you didn't even mention the results I like it's like as soon as you brought it up we just all went into what were the actual results on this this actually was the most votes on one of my polls, too. It was 36 votes. Nice. It was, uh, yes, was 19%. No, was 17%. Yes, want to see more, was 22%. And no, take him off TV. I actually got uh, the winner of 42%. What ah! the fuck is wrong with you people? Travis, Christ. don't get yelling. Don't get yelling. Oh. Yeah. Laugh at that. I know certain Thanks, British dude. people don't like it when you yell on your show, but fuck you, Matt Tennant. That's bullshit. Drew Gulak <laughs> is a great, a great yeah, talent in the hard. ring on top of being entertaining on the mic. And how rare is that to have guys have both? Shame on you people. We still love you though. Please listen and hit that like and subscribe. But what was your, uh, it was a great poll, man. I that was probably you. besides the uh, the second <laughs> one, that was probably my favorite one you've done, honestly, and I'll say Travis goes from heel for like two seconds to, oh, I love you two guys. Please, I'm, please I'm don't don't get mad at me. I'm a tweener. That's what that's what hosts do. We're tweeners. Um, but man, I can't wait to see what you got up your sleeve as usual. You're you're full of surprises with this. You're a magic man, uh, Logan. I mean, I'm triggered apparently, but let's move it on. Tighten the screws up. Get a little more serious. Get it's on. time to take a trip, Logan, down memory lane, cruising down. As a matter of fact, this week, what do we got on tap, my man? Well, uh, for me, I actually had the, you guys had to watch the Chris Jericho versus Eddie Guerrero fall brawl match. Um, what did you guys think of that match this week? Kristen, ladies first this time. Oh, thank you. Go um, ahead, Switz. <laughs> Hang on. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, this was the one. Yeah. By the way, shout out to Jim. Thank you, Jim, for the new nickname because I want someone's gonna call me Sluts eventually, so I'm just bracing myself for it. All right, but, get on with Sluts. Suck my dick. You guys are making anyway. me choke to death. Jesus Christ, with your little ugh. <coughs> go, on, go ahead. Anyways, but um, out of like I guess if I did a three or a four star, ma- I don't know how do they do it? Five star matches? I don't fucking know. But. I would give this one, because this was the one where Eddie Guerrero, spoiler alert, won the WCW Cruiserweight Championship. Um, I usually do my ratings out of five. So I would say I'd probably give it a four out of five, just because I generally, Chris Jericho, you know, even to this day, does still put on good matches. And the fact that I've heard people even go so far as, he's a part-timer. Yeah, but he's a part-timer that you don't get fucking annoyed with Brock Lesnar. Um, But... Overall, I thought it was a great match. I love Eddie Guerrero, RIP. Um, definitely am a Chris Jericho fan. 
I would love to have seen Eddie obviously live a lot longer because I think that would be a cool kind of rematch 20 years later. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, unless Chris Jericho takes the bucket this year. And I'm not saying that to happen. Don't. Don't. We've already had enough people die this yep. year. But Don't you quote her on that, people. She didn't mean it. Well, I was talking to whoever is listening, be that God, Allah, whatever deity or... Well, I already turned on the listeners God. earlier. I'll just keep the heel turn going. So, But, no. I actually really like this match. Um, this match... And it'd be a pinfall at 17 minutes and 20 seconds with Eddie Guerrero landing the frog splash and becoming the WCW Cruiserweight Championship. So out of five stars, I'd give it a four. I thought it was a pretty good match. I mean, I like Eddie Guerrero. Like, Eddie Guerrero and Chris Jericho, I think I could watch their matches all day. It's kind of hard to argue. And what do you think, Travis? Well, I grade in letters, so take that, slits. Um, no, I, I give this this match a solid B plus. This may be maybe the best match these two ever had, and they I mean they worked in WWE for a little bit, but this is right after Guerrero finally turned heel, right? I'm pretty sure. I believe so. Like the summer of '97. I remember, like, did they pull the trigger like Clash of the Champions that year in the summer? I believe. I don't know. But yeah, it, it was. It was. I wouldn't say it was Eddie in his prime. But the, maybe two or three years before both of these guys prime, I would say, but still great match. It, we say it all the time about these cruising down memory lane matches, uh, Chris and Logan. If I'm running a wrestling school and, you know, to my guys that are the style, these are the kind of matches I'm showing them in class. You know what I mean? These are, they're, they're not spot festy too much. There's, they tell good stories. They're not overly fast paced. They're, they're simple. And it's what I think us three, I mean, we, we get off on the spot fest. We love Kyle Riley and Alistair Black this week. But when you see it in every match, like we say, it nullifies your audience. But I think right here is a perfect example of how to how to make a hybrid type match of one of these spot festy, high pace, high flying matches against a methodical slow pace match. And two of the best ever at doing that, I would say, of all time. But yeah, great match, Logan. Uh, Kristen, what was your match this week? Um, hang on. Yeah. Here's where it gets tricky dicky because we may have reviewed different matches with the same guys. I don't know, Logan. <laughs> Logan I know what Logan had. With Vengeance 2002, I could have sworn I said Survivor Series. I may be wrong. So, I mean, they did have Billy Kidman and Jamie Noble. So, you guys may have reviewed two different matches with the same people. Yeah. And to be yeah. fair, 2002 Cruiserweight Division, it kind of blends together. because it's. It was, By the way, I was right, Travis. I was, was right. It was Vengeance we're reviewing. Well, whatever, because he fucking watched the other one. So you both can review your own Billy Kidman and right. Jamie Newman matches. Logan, you first. Well, the match that I watched was, um, uh, it was good. I actually enjoy Jamie Noble when he was in the Cruiserweights division. Um, he was definitely, like, underrated to me. Billy Kidman was all right. Like he was more like a tag team performer in my opinion. Um, great match. I mean, it wasn't like something to like, wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, that's what you get for putting me on the spot. So now that I've actually been able to do my research, I think you'll enjoy. It. I'll redeem myself for for kind of picking a shit choice. So. Well, there you have it. I mean, pretty much the same experience for me. It was a good match. I, Jamie Noble was also one of my favorite parts. But I think it, I think Jamie Noble stood out, just like Gulak, because he's one of the few guys in the division that actually had a gimmick. You know what I mean? Whereas, hey, I'm just fucking Billy Kidman, just less interesting now, because they took away everything that got me over in the first place, like the wife beater, the jean shorts. Now I'm in weird white tights, and I look kind of fat. And now Billy Kidman's fat in real life. But yeah, it, the match was okay. <laughs> the match was okay. I... It, I didn't know these guys wrestled as much as I did until you gave me this homework, Chris. I looked like they had like it feels like eighteen matches on velocity. I tried to like browse through all that, but I mean it was it was good. It was fine. I've seen worse matches. It didn't set my world on fire, but it, it's good choice, Kristen. And you well, know like what? I said, I'm, I'm redeeming myself this week. So you know why okay. I liked your pick because you know when when Logan and I are, are a lot of people we're guilty of when we talk about classic cruiserweights. A lot of people just go to like WCW because that was the best. It seems like. But so it's nice to get a pick that's like a little outside of the box for once. You know what I mean? So well done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
I don't think I gave you guys a match last week. On you Monday. did, actually. It was Coach Obushi versus Cedric Alexander. Oh, okay, there, you <laughs> there you go. Just take over my job, Chris. Go ahead. Segue it. Sorry. Well, you said you didn't give a match. I was I giving you props because I messed up and you took the reins. By all means. I said, oh, yeah, we're not talking about taking reins. But anyways, this was, as everyone remembers, the CWC Classic, which uh, I really wish they need to do something like that soon because... Because, 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 because it was fucking beautiful. It lived up to the hype. It was fucking wonderful. It made you want to tune in every single week to be like, okay, who we got this week? Okay, who do we have this week? And then, like, these names that people maybe weren't familiar with, it gave them the opportunity to see Kota Ibushi, Cedric Alexander, you know, fucking Pete Dunne, you know, all these names that no, not, I don't want to say that nobody, that sounds a bit harsh, but like, a lot of people hadn't heard of. So you got introduced to a bunch of new faces. Something I actually learned um, doing a little back research about this match is Alexander actually lost 22 pounds to qualify yep. for the tournament under 205 pounds. Um, I mean, they pretty much... I mean, it was a beautiful match. Like, this match, honestly... I thought was kind of the best map. Maybe. I don't know. Nah. I'd give it a four and a half out of five. Um, you know, at first, I thought Ibushi was kind of going to have it. You know, tried to pin him. Got a two count. Um, Alexander got him in a headlock. After he nailed his back elbow, Ibushi kind of nailed him with a hard kick right in the chest. And you're like, oh, fuck, that looks like it hurt. Abushi, you know, chopped to the face, fucking springboard missile drop kick. Everything much these guys Alexander do, went, I will say that these guys make everything they do look legit for the most part, except for that goddamn exactly. thigh smack Cedric sometimes. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> um, Abushi went for a moonsault over the ring. Alexander was like, nope, thanks. Went in the ring, hit a somersault dive over the top, and pretty much took Abushi out right on the floor. Um, the fact that what actually kind of scared me about this match watching it was the fact that when Alexander went to do a springboard leaping clothesline, he fucking, Abushi landed right on his neck. And I'm like, yeah. as the medical in me, I'm like, fuck, please tell me he did not just break his neck. This is not good. Even going but, back the second time, it made you do the same cringe? It did. Honestly, it did. And I don't know if that's the medical aspect of me or the fact that it was just like, Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit the first time. Rewatching it again, I was like Yeah, oh, plus it's probably been a while since you've watched it too, on top of you probably forgot about it. Probably this. about a year. Maybe yeah. a year and a half. Um well maybe not a year and a half, but at least a year, I will say that much. Um I remember Abushi went in for a kick on him and Alexander was like mm, blocked it and pretty much Abushi then countered that same move and pretty much nailed him with a beautiful fucking drop kick just beautiful i mean the crowd went absolutely nuts when he hit that and you don't really see not that you don't see it all the time but you don't see it very often um pretty much back and forth forearm shots for quite a while um and i mean it was a great match i mean fans were saying this is awesome i mean it was it was a beautiful fucking well put on match i felt and it went 15 minutes, so it went for a pretty good while. Kota Ibushi was the winner, but what made it kind of, like, my favorite part, like, going back and re-watching the match, was at the very end, yep. where you can hear the audience saying, please sign Cedric. Please See, that's the thing about the Full Sail fans. I mean, people can love them or hate them. At the end of the day, they're, they're probably this era's version of the ECW fans back in the day, Logan, you agree, as far as knowledge, like, they knew who the fuck Cedric was. They knew where he came from. They knew where all these guys Well, that's from. like, speaking of Tommaso and Champa, how we were talking about earlier, uh, Champa lost his, lost his match in the first round, but... It's Gargano. Exactly, and he had a great fucking match, and look at how far that went, granted. It's yeah. no longer, but, I mean, it doesn't matter. You can have a match where you lose, and still get over. I mean, Tommaso and Ciampa were great and up until WWE. It's like, hey, let's break them up. Let's not even give them a chance on the main fucking roster. I'm digging Gorgon singles, though. Like I said, I'm giving it a chance. I, I do. 
Johnny Wrestling. Um, all we all we can no. do is either we'll, bitch or give it a chance, and sometimes it just yeah. I get sick of bitching, you know. <laughs> so get, but no, definitely, <coughs> I absolutely love the match, and I just love it because, like you said, full sale crowd can be fuckheads. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, but I'm not sorry. You guys can be total fuckheads if any of you listen to this, because I mean, literally, you know, Alexander. Careful, that that's in your backyard. They might them. come and shank you. They're not too far from you. I don't give a fuck. Suck my dick. I'm an hour. I'll, dro- I'll, dro- I'll dox myself. Here's my address. I'm not going to do that. But, um, but, I mean, at that time, you know, he gave it his all. And a lot of people, well, I'm sure a lot of people now, if they do their research, know that he had a two-year-old daughter. Um, I don't remember if this, or maybe if I was seeing like a highlight package by like somebody on YouTube, but they were actually showing pictures of him like hugging his daughter after the match. And I mean, literally, I mean, Triple H, the fact that he came out and was like, yes, absolutely. And Cedric earned his contract, even though he's lost the match, yeah. shows you what a performer he is. I see you've changed your name to Slits on the Skype thing finally. Um, it was solid. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Do you th- Logan, you think when Triple H came out at the end, he whispered into his ears, hey, kid, we're going to put you in an angle with Alicia Fox, make it a Skype gimmick. What do you think? <laughs> Logan, what do you think of the match? These two guys, um, it's not even just the match. The match was phenomenal. These two guys put on, like, chemistry-wise, a great fucking match. It, uh, I know a lot of people were hoping that... Um, at the end of the day, that Obushi would actually sign with the WWE and Ibushi. you know get part of Ibushi, Ibushi. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm not perfect sometimes. You can leave that to me. Then no, I'm kidding. You not be a cunt. Oh, for God's sakes. Lovey, lovey. If it's he, not my course, fucking question. You gotta say though. I'm gonna shove Logan. a fucking cold cut down your throat. Keep your shit up, Logan. <laughs> You got to say, though, I but, think for Abushi business wise, it was way smarter to just go back to Japan because he's making so much more money over there as to what he would make yeah. in so much NXT. money. But can you imagine the matches that Obushi could actually uh, would have put on like against like guys like Neville or uh, even doing a second oh, match with uh, Cedric Alexander? A couple great feuds for all of them. Um, Cedric Alexander, uh, to me, Came out of the Cruiserweight Classic as probably the, the star that nobody actually thought would come out as a star. And that's to me, speaks volumes. Um, I did. I'll call it right now. I knew it. I, as soon as I saw they put Cedric Alexander, I'm like, because I knew a lot of him from Ring of Honor with ACH and all their matches. I was like, fuck yeah, Cedric, he's going to get over. Watch. And he's not going to have to say a word on a mic because he's that good in the ring. Do you think, do you, we go back real quick to where you said he had to lose 22 pounds to get in the tournament? Logan, here's a question I got for you. Um, do you think that that is asinine to think that you would make a talent like Cedric Alexander have to cut that weight just to be on a cruiserweight debate? He should have been good enough to be on SmackDown or NXT at least. Like, that's ludicrous looking back in a way. Actually, there was a report going out that he actually did not weigh 205, that he actually was over that. Well, I'm pretty sure Tony Nese isn't 190 fucking pounds either. I'm I'm sure the (laughs) the weights aren't accurate. (laughs) Well, we know WWE likes to exaggerate things. Yeah, Nia Jax is 270 pounds. Bitch, where? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't like um, to that. Shame speaking of that, up Bailey. the Brian Kendrick it only weighs, supposedly only weighs 140-something pounds. Bitch, where? Bitch, where? Uh, let that sink in. Um, yeah. Well, for your, for your match that you actually uh, had us watch, Travis, it... You know, I think this is out of all the cruising down memory lane matches that we've uh, thrown out there. I think this is probably the best match to date. Well, you're welcome, Logan. So I thank you for uh, giving me a match to like go back and rewatch and like just plain as day, just learn that. that you gonna learn like, today. Is it, you know what, though, guys? I think all three of us are going to agree. And anyone listening to this that goes back and watches it, you got to admit, to see what we're talking about with 205 Live now, this match, when you when you watch it and it's over, it's fucking depressing. you got to admit, it is depressing as shit to see how far we've fallen from this. This was, this was the best part of that entire tournament, by the way. I don't think any of us have, have said that, but I think we all feel that. 
this had to be the best part of that tournament. And it, the match, yes, we bitch about spot festiness. It's okay sometimes, guys. We're okay with it sometimes. Like I said, we just don't want to see it in every fucking match. This match is one of the best matches of 2016 by far. Maybe the best in that company in a WWE type ring, I would say. But if you have never seen that match, what the hell are you doing on WWE Network? Stop watching Akeem and Big Boss Man promos for five minutes and watch that match. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's excellent. But yeah. Stop watching Big Boss Man uh, take Big Show's dad's casket and go watch this match. Jeez. Oof. Anyone that watches that more than once is a masochist anyway. That was so bad. But Logan, what do you got up your sleeve for next week for our, our homework for Cruising Down Memory Lane? Well... This match was um, probably not going to be like the best match you're going to watch. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to go different and not try to like find like the best cruiserweight match. I'm going to try to find like something that's kind of like mediocre and kind of like terrible. I want to just want to see your opinion. Rey Mysterio versus Matt Hardy, WrestleMania 19. 19. The opener. The opener. Good one. Chris. Hang on. Rey Myster- He's a Rey Mysterio and Matt. <laughs> WrestleMania 19. I'm just trying to make notes. Don't judge me. I've got one, too, that's probably not that good, but if anything, it's going to get some laughs. But the, the guy in it is a guy that I thought could have totally been something. If you want me to say what mine is real quick, if you need a minute, Kristen. No, I have mine, but I'll let you go first anyways. Oh, thank you. Well, my pick, do you remember in WCW, like 98, this guy came His name was Blitzkrieg. Do you remember this guy? Oh, God. This guy was really fucking good. And the fact that he'd never got, like, a WCW Cruiserweight title run or anything blows my mind looking back. I want you guys to go back and check out Blitzkrieg versus Juventud Guerrero, April 11th, 1999. Yes, we all get last when we hear the name Juventud Guerrero, but, man, he was one of the better Cruiserweights, too. Michael hates him. I'll flat out say it. Michael thinks... Say, 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 say the whole thing again, Travis. Blitzkrieg versus Juventud Guerrero. From April 11th, 1999. It's on YouTube. Have no fear. It's a WCW match. I think you guys are going to come away shocked at how good this Blitzkrieg guy was. Blitzkrieg. Excuse me. But that's what I got. <laughs> my obscure fucking was last name. Have fun with it. Kristen. It was Blitzkrieg versus Juventud Guerrero. Yes. Love him. Mine... I'm going to stroll back to the Cruiserweight Classics. I'm going to make you guys watch Pete Dunne versus Jack Gallagher. Pete Dunne wasn't on the Cruiserweight Classic, I thought. He was on the UK. Are you tournament. sure? Pretty sure. Maybe, well, that's, maybe that's what I'm thinking. I don't Pretty know. Pretty sure. Yep. Maybe. But, yeah, you're going to watch that match. Pete Dunne versus Jack Gallagher. Those two work, what, in progress, you mean? I don't think they've worked in maybe. WWE together yet. I know that I know they had a big program in progress. Hang on. Let me see. Maybe it is progress. I'm we can go to progress. Oh, hold on. That's fine if you want. Well, no, just because I like Pete John. So. Here's a wait. Why not? Let's do it. Fuck it. If it's in progress, we'll we'll check out Jack Alher and Pete Dunn. Sounds like you're good to a hell of a match. I like those guys. But, oh, uh, I like Pete Dunn, so I'm completely okay with that. All right. Well, that's it for this week's Cruising Down Memory Lane. You know what I'd like to start on this segment, Logan? We need to get some... Uh, and you're listen- right, it was progress. There you go. You're we right, need, it was We progress. need to get some listener requests in the comments on Twitter. I'd love to see what the, our, our listeners have up their sleeves for us to watch. They probably just troll us and give us the worst stuff ever, honestly. <laughs> but someday we'll do a request week or something, maybe once a month. But that was that. Was that. Uh, Logan, what's next on the agenda this week? Well, we were going to talk about what's next for Cedric Alexander, and I just want to get you, your guys' opinion on how do you book him, what do you do with him, um, If since it's Akira Tozawa getting another chance at the Cruiserweight title, what well, do you do with him going forward? Bada boom, biggest Cedric mark in the room. Kristen, what do you think? <laughs> Thanks, Travis. Um I mean, like, I I guess I really can't deny that now that it's recorded, it's on the internet forever. I am a very big Cedric Mark. Um, I mean, Cedric puts on really good matches, in my opinion, and it's not just because of me being a Mark. It's so real to me, damn it. Um, But 
I absolutely can't wait for gold to be around his fucking waist. I just don't know how they're going to book that yet. Because like you said, Neville's facing uh, Akira Tozawa for the championship. So I don't know how they're going to book. Because I mean, I want I want Cedric with the gold around his waist. That's That's my ultimate goal down the line. But I don't know if I want to see it being Cedric Alexander versus Akira Tozawa. As much as I like them both. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to book him, and it, it kind of throws me off. I just know that I would love to see gold around his waist, period. If you want to do it sooner rather than later, by all means, WWE Creative, if you're fucking listening, get on it. But, but do it right. Don't don't rush it too much. Right, yeah, no, don't rush into it. Y'all are pretty good for fucking shit up real early by rushing into it. It's hard but, to say. I think Logan, and you and I have said this before, even Kristen uh, came on board, Bruce Control, about uh, Cedric in one of her first episodes. I think that you would prefer – you wanted Cedric heel, right? You wanted to see a heel Cedric or a heel Tozawa and them have a program for the title? A heel Tozawa. <gasps> see, I could even see Cedric as but a I heel, can't... as a cocky fucking arrogant heel getting over too. But I, I can't see now because of Kira Tozawa's chant being so over, <gasps> I can't see him being a heel. I see Cedric Alexander would probably be a decent heel uh, because look at the reaction he's been getting lately. Uh, yeah. No offense to Kristen or anything. It's just the fans have failed at, at giving him a proper uh, reaction. Like, like he does, just deserves it. I mean, don't get me wrong. His promos aren't the, the best, but uh, in-ring in, talent. In his, in his defense, God, I sound like I'm a fucking girlfriend. In his defense. The fact that they do this right after SmackDown Live, why not do it beforehand when you know people are going to actually be there and aren't going to yeah. be leaving to go home because they have fucking kids or work? Like they used like to do with main event superstars right before Raw started live because I've gone to Raw's and SmackDown's. They would tape that shit an hour before for the same crowd. Mm-hmm. And they were like some of those reactions the guys would get on the entrance for like a fucking Kurt Hawkins back in the day or Zack Ryder because that was the first <laughs> match of the night. It seemed like they could be the world champion. And I think Cedric could get a good reaction, but you got it. It's all backwards. It's all fucking backwards. Yeah. When do you ever close any kind of big super show with cruiserweight wrestlers as the main event? I'm talking about like a, a, a night of tapings you go to. Usually, now they say that like there's a dark match at the end of these. Like Nakamura and someone else usually still comes out after 205 Live. How burnt out is that crowd for that dark match main event for one? And I, I don't know. It's I feel like broken record. I, I really, especially with the Cedric topic, it's just that Alicia Fox thing. And I, I hope we all I, uh, uh, I hope we all agree on this was the biggest <laughs> waste of fucking time you could possibly do with Cedric. The only good thing we got out well, of I that. Well, I mean, it's Alicia Fox. So. The, well, it, the booking of it. You could have made it somewhat tolerable with Alicia in there, just not as much Alicia, but. The only good thing we got about that is we got a couple good matches with Noam Dar, but I mean, you know what I mean, Logan? It's frustrating. I agree with Cedric. There was, there took, was like no, to me, there was just like no uh, like um, way of even really explaining what they wanted to do with Cedric Alexander. Like during the feud with uh, with um. Alicia Fox and Noam Dar. It was just like, okay, this is the stupidest thing. There was no like direction for either one of them, so it just didn't work out for Cedric Alexander in the long run. And it's sad he does get great talent. Uh, and yes, the fans are like burnt out after SmackDown. Uh, I'm kind of burnt out after SmackDown too. Well, so you no. figure they've probably been there. Some of them have been there for you know hours prior to the show even starting. But, and fucking probably like exploring, you know, the little area around there. And then fucking once they get let in, you know, buying merch and getting on, food and drinks and all that On a completely positive shit. note, though, some of the best feelings I get watching 205 Live is the point in case this week, a match we're going to review, Grand Metal League and Tony Nese. Those two guys got that crowd invested and off of their fucking feet by the end of that match. And when that happens on 205 Live, it makes me feel good for these guys busting their ass because... I hate how WWE tests their talent, quote-unquote. I'm doing finger quotes, nobody can see it. 
when when they okay, my god let's give this alexander kid a try okay they base him off of crowd reactions that's vince's mentality it has been for 30 fucking years if they're not reacting to this guy he's not worth it she any kind of heat's good heat but they're at least they're reacting and when they see duds for cedric alexander Someone like Vincent Mann never thinks he's wrong, right? So he doesn't see that the placement of 205 Live is a bad thing. He's just looking at it through his Vincent Mann tunnel vision saying, this guy's not getting over. Pull the plug. And that's the problem. That's the mm-hmm. fucking problem. It's, it's, There's it's, so many people I feel in 205 that could be absolutely wonderful for for the product. But the fact that, mm-hmm. like you said, Vince basing shit off crowd reactions and that that whole fucking product is so overcrowded as it is right now anyways. Yep. It's not helping anybody at this point. And, and let's segue into this next thing because it's kind of along the same lines so we can get the trade moving to actually review the show this week. Um, what do you do with a guy like Ari Davari, especially after this week? Now, a lot of, like, I totally saw this as this was just something for Tozawa to do to give him, him an excuse to be number one contender again. So people can't say that, oh, he, they just made him contender dude deserve. That's totally what I saw them using Davari as enhancement talent. I think that's all this was. He does, he does nothing for me. I think, Kristen, we've said that together on an episode. Logan, I know you've been a fan of him in the past, but, I mean, it, it was your question on the show this week. So what do you do with Arya Davari, Logan? Push him right out the door. <laughs> oh. Don't commit murder or homicide. Just I don't mean him. that'd be pushing him off a building, but, yeah. What if the door's no. at top of a building? Tough shit. Not my problem. I push him oh, out the door. See. Oh. He. Okay. Um, he isn't terrible on the mic. Let's just say that right now. He isn't that bad. Um, he isn't Tony Nese, at least. Um, (gasps) Wow. He isn't bad in the ring. He's actually put on a couple decent matches. Uh, I didn't really like the match against Neville, so, on, uh, 205 Live, so, and that's part of the reason why I wasn't just excited even to, to even see if he were to even win, you know, I, I just wasn't invested in seeing that feud. Uh, heel versus heel, it's different. Yeah, it's it's. I think all challengers should go against Neville and just be able to go for that. I'm glad to see somebody that that isn't really looked at as a main event talent, even on 205 Live, that is given given an opportunity. It reminds me like they're trying to they were trying to use um, him kind of like the Jinder Mahal. Trying to get that that section of the that sweet Indian demographic. Go ahead and say it. You already did yeah. pretty much. <laughs> we all know where you're going with this slogan. The thing say. is, he's fucking Iranian. <laughs> I'm surprised. Like next week, they'll just announce him from Punjab, India, just to like say fuck it. Just to fuck with people. They for him. What do you do with him? You just well, don't do anything. Push him right out the door. You just keep making not him cannon push. fodder. No, I don't kick him out of the door because you need. You, not everybody can be the top guy. You need enhancement talent. I think he's a solid oh. worker. I don't think anything's wrong with him. I, but I think he's a perfect like his brother. Let's say it. His brother, the older Davari, was a perfect enhancement talent guy. I would rather mm-hmm. see Arya Davari than the other Davari at the end of the day. Because when, when other Davari came on my TV nine times out of ten, I changed the goddamn channel. I will not lie <laughs> to you. Well then, Arya Davari could. Uh put on a couple of decent like matches against maybe Cedric Alexander have like a feud with him or Jack Gallagher. Uh, he shouldn't be at the title, uh, but he shouldn't be pushed out the door. Cause at the end of the day, they need as much talent as they have. Um, I just don't, there's nothing really, there's no direction for him. And I don't see where you can even push him. And that's why I wanted to ask you guys, what, what would you guys do besides pushing him out the fucking door, Kristen? What? <laughs> you asked for a fucking response? I gave it. Yeah. I mean, she's honest. Like how Travis said, with the older Tavari. Tavari, wow. Devari. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, not, like you said, nine times out of ten, and when he came on. All right, let me flip back to the other show that I was watching. And then by the time I came back, it was done. Is so. it me, or every time I see the name Devari, like in text, I read it in my head at first as Daiquiri, like every time. Every no. fucking time. I swear, I read it that way. All the years that no, uh, Davari exactly has wrestled for WWE. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, I mean, I, it is what it is. You know, Like we said, not every guy can be the guy, pretty much. Right, and I don't know, maybe if I give him a chance, I guess I could do so. But 
I don't know. Like, his brother didn't do anything for me back when he was in the program. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe they'll fix up. But for right now, I want him out the door. Well, I guess without further ado, we can get the show on the road and get into 205 Live this week, guys, if you're down. I'm down. I'm ready when you are. You know what? They about, after we got the build-up package, by the way, the, the opening vignette of the show, I thought I accidentally hit a repeat on the episode. I don't know if you guys did the same thing, so I had to go back for a second because I thought it was the previous week. So I feel like it was the exact same vignette last week from like a week before on Raw. They didn't even show highlights on Raw this week. So I was like... Oh, you're talking about... Uh... For the first match? I'm, no, I'm just, I'm just talking about how the show 205 opened this week. The opening vignette was from last week's oh, Raw, so vignette. it confused me. So I thought I had the wrong episode of 205 Live. But no, I was good. It was the right episode. But Logan, they almost gave me a stroke and a heart attack simultaneously. Jack Gallagher and Brian Kendrick finally had a goddamn match. Holy shit, they finally just wrestled. And interestingly <laughs> enough... I kind of like this. I kind of like ser- seeing a serious side of Jack Gallagher. This came off as real. It's like, okay, you're going to talk shit about me. I don't care about getting DQ'd. I'm just going to continuously beat the shit out of you. I think the problem oh, is... Right me out this, of so, the gate, he beat the fuck out of him. I was like, yeah. yes! I think the premise was good for this. I will flat out say it. Yes, I'm a Jack Gallagher fan. I don't think he showed enough intensity here. I would have liked to see more, in- more intensity, but it gets a pass this segment. What did you guys think about this match and how it opened the show? Do you want to start, start, Logan, or? First. Slits. All right, fine. Um, No, I thought this match, like you said, like, Jack coming out right at the bat and just fucking beating the fuck out. Well, he didn't beat the fuck out of him. Maybe that's just wistful thinking. Well, what happened was he had um, Kendrick in the ropes. Yeah, he wouldn't stop striking Kendrick in the ropes during the match, and he he ignored the ref's count. Then he DQ'd him or something. I think that was the actual. Yeah. So the ref called for yeah the ref called for the bell. So uh, like if you see my notes because I was kind of paying attention but I wasn't. So I was like Brian wins via DQ question mark. (laughs) Because I was like kind of trying to pay attention to what was going on in the background here at my house too. So I was like, I think so. So I went back and did see that it was. So that question mark's now like scratched out. But I mean, I love the fact that Jack pretty much was like, nope, fuck this. I don't even care that the bell's been ring. I got DQ'd, whatever. But the fact that he continued to just beat the crap out of Brian until the refs came in and Brian pretty much just crawled through the crowd like, nope, fuck this shit, I'm out. I thought it was, I was surprised because I didn't expect it. Like I thought it was just going to be Tony Nese and Grand Metal League as the first match. But I was pleasantly surprised that it was, or, you know, I expected another fucking Brian Kendrick fucking clown Photoshop bullshit. Yeah, because he but, came out okay. during his entrance with a fucking mic, so I thought, here we go. To open up. But then oh, I was great. like, oh my here god, he's going to wrestle it. Last week. I couldn't believe it. it. No, it was, no, it was pretty good. I actually liked the match. I was surprised. Because, again, it was something, like you said, when you see Kendrick fucking walk, you know, with the mic, you're like, oh, fucking fantastic. Yeah. Here we go again. And then Jack comes out, and it was fucking beautiful. Logan, I'm dying to know what you thought about this, man. I really am. Well, first things first. Um, to me, this brand new side of Jack Gallagher, I liked. Um, the, it was more like an intensity that uh, we were waiting to see. You know, he's all about being the uh, the nice guy, trying to like do the right thing and all that. And this time he was just like, you know what, I'm going to go out here. I'm gonna fuck him up. I'm I'm tired of the bullshit. I'm gonna make him pay for him making fun of me and putting a clown face on me. If that really grinds your gears though and really pisses you off, somebody making fun of you using a clown face. Yeah. You might want to seek anger management you... therapy. Something. <laughs> I would like like to me. <clears throat> I've been photoshopped onto penises from my friends as like a joke Whoa, and I didn't what? beat their ass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like to me, I might edit. Um, <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> For example, uh, guys, the, um, Roger strong is going after Bobby Roode because he's disrespected his family. To me, that's what the Brian Kendrick, and this is how it should Dude, have been. Dude, he going. went after his wife and kid. Fuck that. We went after Be Jack's that. countrymen, right? That's where you're going with the Logan? Yeah, something like that. Making it more personal. 
putting a face, a clown face on, on somebody's face to me, that is that really going to get him to like snap and show more intensity? That's the only thing is maybe this side will get him to the cru- cruiserweight championship in the future. I could see Jack Gallagher being a cruiserweight champion. Uh, I can too. I, I, I think the only thing I would have done different with this, and when I talk about the intensity, you know how like it kind of just see, okay, Brian Kendrick went into the crowd, right, guys, and he's sitting on the floor in the crowd. And, and, and um, Gallagher's just kind of awkwardly sta- standing there on the outside, on the mats. He's not over in the crowd. He's just standing there with one ref, just kind of just staring into space. I would have liked to see just Gallagher – like have to have like three or four refs hold him back and like he just won't stop trying to get like I think that would have gotten yeah like have like three or four holding him back he's still trying to like leap like, over to, yeah just to get this guy and... over is like wow that's a crazy crazy fucking British guy I don't want to mess with him a crazy couple, fucking yeah. ginger oh no we already let that girl go to somebody else anyways I just couldn't help. I was waiting on it I really every time we mention Jack Gallagher I'm waiting on a ginger reference but it's fine that's why you're here um. Yeah, I hope this. I hope they don't do shit the bed with this next week, guys, and we have to review a boring ass Photoshop promo again. Be like, well, we were you, great, and then they fucked it all up again. What would you guys do next week? Let me put you on the spot. Where would you take this next week or this feud from here, Logan? I think um, next week Jack Gallagher should call Brian Kendrick out, and they should just brawl. This time, show more intensity. Give it a give it a more storyline. Give it more reason to fight just to me the clown face just doesn't it doesn't give me a reason why he should be like snapping so it, it, they need to do something something that's like bold get the get the the fans to say hey this is exactly why jack Gallagher should fucking fuck you up not a clown face don't yeah. do it i Kristen, go ahead you're not gonna two cents no you're good um But I would like to see, I don't know how WWE would do this, but I would kind of do it like a kind of a, have them build like some kind of backstory, like stuff we didn't get to see that led up to like the proverbial straw breaking the camel's back would be that clown picture. Like there was other stuff leading up to it that caused them to snap and go after it. But no, I would love to see them actually just beat the shit out of each other. As much as I wasn't really a Gallagher fan at first, he's kind of growing on me. There like, Kendrick, I mean, like, I, I still, and this is so bad, but I still think of fucking Kendrick from his first go around with fucking SmackDown and the fucking goofy, like, short kind of blondish hair, walks in on Stephanie butt-ass naked. Of course, it was censored, so we don't know if that was just, like, a skin color bathing suit or what. He's like, oh, I'm excited to meet you. Yeah, I can tell. Like, <laughs> I'm never going to get over that. And, like, I, I don't know if it's because of the whole fact, like, he was actually, speaking of people in WWE, he was the one who actually trained Eva Marie for wrestling. Yeah. And she was so, released today on We're Recording This. So, womp, 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 womp. But I would love to see Jack get a little bit more over, like, have them build up some kind of storyline, even if it's something just minute. Not minuscule, but something like a kind of a backstory. Okay, yes, he got pissed about the drawing, but here's what led up to it, and that was the straw that kind of broke the camel's back. Like, give us something to actually work with. Not like you said, not just oh, I'm pissed off over a picture. Because like you said, you might want to seek anger, anger management if you're getting pissy over a picture. But yeah, who knows? It's WWE creative, so we know that shit's up in the air. The last thing I want to see them do is what they're probably going to do. They're just going to throw them in another goddamn match next week. There's going to be no incentive now. They're just going to keep even stevening it. Something. What I would do, I would have uh, Kendrick um, show like a different side of him, come out, have some balls in the ring. Like, look, Jack Gallagher, blah, blah, blah. Call him out. Out comes Jack Gallagher. Brian Kendrick's finally being a man. Then all of a sudden... Brian Kendrick hits him with the lead fucking pipe he had in his jacket the whole time. Hidden. That way, Kendrick gets his heat back. You keep the feud going a little back. Some kind of incentive. It's one of the simplest fucking tricks in wrestling to do something like that. Make it a sneaky chicken shit thing to do. Get sympathy for Jack. <laughs> that way, you can be like, the only reason you knocked him out, Kendrick, is you had to play it. Blah, blah, blah. Something. And you knew you couldn't beat him with just your hands. That's how I'd book it. That's what I would do next week. That's the exact promo and i would but I, and I would not make it a long-winded photoshop promo it would be simple to the point serious side of kendrick you never see and that's why it's going to make him a bigger chicken shit heel because he wasn't really being brave and serious he was tricking him so 
what I do. Mm. Was this when we got fucking uh, Mustafa Ali playing PlayStation with Rich Swan on this hey, fucking show? Hey, I like that yes. segment. Oh, my. Logan, my man, take it. Um, yeah, they, they had this little segment where uh, Mustafa Ali was uh, playing the PlayStation WWE 2K17 with uh, Rich Swan and TJP came in and they did a couple back and forth things and then uh match was um offered to uh I think it was Rich Juan offering the match one on one against TJP for next week. So what do you guys think? Uh what are your expectations? And that segment kinda made me laugh. (laughs) What do you guys think real quick about the tweet Perkins sent out this week saying he works harder than anyone on the roster when he got offended in a KO fan? Speaking of God, we're sitting here talking about Since it is two of five related and newsworthy, I even forgot. Have you seen Mustafa Ali's tweets from yesterday (laughs) at fucking like three o'clock in the morning? This dude went fucking off. Like Mustafa Ali seems that kind of whole laid back. Yeah. You know. And then just like completely went off on someone who is a part of two of five, I guess. Like, I don't know. Like the whole situation, Mr. Four Fifty. I don't even know who this guy is. Cussing? Um like well, not really cussing. The character I mean, kind of thing? No, like he was sitting there like, oh, well, maybe when you stop choking women, people might take you seriously. And I'm like, Mr. Oh, 450, shit. that's a guy I think had a tryout. And I think he got a tryout, and I don't know if he made it or they just were like, you know, we'll call you people. Well, we know WWE, you know, we'll we'll look into it. But um, Mustafa Ali, it was like three o'clock in the morning. So, for, of course, the first thing yep. when I pulled up the phone. Independent um, wrestler, Twitter. Mr. 450, accused of domestic violence during WrestleMania weekend. He did. He had an NXT trial. I do remember this guy. His name's John Yurnett, a.k.a. Mr. 450. Uh, yeah, be, be, uh, the Orlando PD is still investigating that. Yep, there so, it is. Wow. Well, good for Mustafa but Ali. Mustafa good for Ali, him. yeah, was sitting there. Well, because, like, uh, Mr. 450 had sat there and said something. Something like a kind of a backhanded comment. And... um Mustafa Ali, because I love Mustafa. Prince Ali, book him as fucking Aladdin Disney. Get your shit together. Copyrights. Can't do that. I don't give a fuck. They'll call him Full Aladdin. They'll get around it. Full Aladdin. (laughs) But um, the guy, Mecca Wolf 450 is his Twitter handle if anybody wants to follow that. So, um, but he had posted something and (laughs) Um, like kind of made a subtweet, and Mustafa Ali is like, "I'm right here if you're gonna say something. Have fun digging yourself out of the hole." And like he just went back and forth with this guy. I mean, like it was literally like three o'clock in the morning. So the first thing I see, because I follow Mustafa Ali, was he pretty much sat there like calling him like John Snow Wolf Pirate guy. Stop doing my move. Um, Jesus. talking about. What did you end up calling the, you? the lying lumbar kick? Yeah. In, right. Um, well, you know, that's... then like fan, fans were calling him out. Like, wasn't this the guy who tried to get WWE to pay for an injury he previously had by lying about it? Yeah, um, that guy's kind of a piece of shit. He really is. Yeah, well, then Ali yeah. was like, oh, there's no response from him. Hmm, I'll just be petty and retweet everything during the day so he can be reminded of what I think of him. He's like, maybe I'll expose him with some stories about the wonderful thing he's done to other human beings. And then a fan, like, I guess, saw that tweet <coughs> and um, said, I'd say to be careful with what you say, but you aren't a woman, so no worries. And then they put a link from a pro wrestling sheet where it talks about independent wrestler Mr. 450 accused uh-huh. of domestic violence. In yeah, the they, that might have been the link I just clicked. And, and the listeners, they're looking at the tweets right now. I'm going to find the picture and put it up. So they know uh, the exact words, because I'm sure he's going to be made to take it down, but I'm sure tons of people are going to screenshot it. They always do. But uh, I mean, like, it, it just made me laugh because there's a bunch of people. It's 3.22 in the morning, and Mustafa Ali's got people, everyone on Twitter, like, it's got the guy looking at the screen, and then it's like, bruh, and then you see all the heads, like, get up behind him. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that shit had me dying. And then Mustafa Ali, 21 hours ago, because now this is almost yesterday, 
Hey, Mecca Wolf 450, when you're done allegedly, and he uses quotation marks, choking women, faking injuries, and backstabbing friends, read my timeline. Left you love notes. And then he, like, went back, like, shortly after that. To those who follow me for the positivity I try to promote, I apologize for expressing some negativity. However, this needed to be done. And then I guess shortly after that, he woke up, and he's like, oh, tough guy. And it shows that the guy blocked him. He's like, I'm not upset that someone does a move that I do. I'm upset that somebody I absolutely dislike did it, and it was insulting. Wow. But, I, I mean, it was fucking beautiful. Like, nice. just sitting there, and I'm like, oh, Mustafa Ali. That was fucking beautiful. Like, he just went in on this guy, and then the fans are, you know how we can be as fans. Fans are fucking brutal. That shit was fucking, like, just dragged him across the fucking pavement with some of these fans. Like, that shit was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Logan, you a big Mr. 450 fan? You got a few shirts of him? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, on a more positive note, before we continue our review, I did put up a new cruise control poll. If you could sign one guy from the Cruiserweight Classic that haven't been seen since then, who would it be? You guys don't have to answer until we'll find out next week. But Kota Ibushi, Zack Sabre Jr., Anthony Bennett, or Raul Mendoza. Raul Mendoza. Good poll, Logan. So go, uh, Logan's check hard on out. the poll. Um, actually, there's already six votes, and I just put it up maybe like <laughs> Boom. two minutes nice. ago. Thank you guys for the feedback once again. Yes, right, Logan. Let's not talk about that piece of shit, Mr. 450. Let's talk about more relevant things. And shout out to Mustafa Ali once again. Good for him. Are, is anyone excited for this CJP versus Swan match? Because I... I think it's going to be no. a really good match, but this feud is so get that get it the fuck over with, kiss ladies and move on kind of thing. It's like boring. It doesn't have to and be this be- sit down Cosby session they had like this. It was all like full house and they're just chilling. The camera zooms in on slow in this emotional moment. But it was like what the fuck? It, it, this was the worst part of two five live for me this week. It took away from the pacing. I thought the rest of the show was paced more upbeat, but this just drug it down for me. Especially, I cringe when I see angles with wrestlers fucking fake playing video games like come on come on but logan is it like legitimate and i might believe it but yeah like these they, they might have been but still i don't want to see video games in my wrestling angles <laughs> it's me it's, it's a another thing, thing. I, I, and i'm gonna i'm not gonna say a lot on this okay but uh to me stop giving us promos from a guy who cannot speak that well on the mic We've done complained about this multiple are we talk- times. Are we talking about diaper butt? I mean, and I know Chris, Kristen's not going to like what I say about this, but I cannot stand TJP on the microphone. I like you to pretend call- TJP stands for the Jizz Professor, and then it makes him entertaining <laughs> to me because that's the only way he's really tolerable for me in an entertaining fashion. I like his entering work, but ugh. I'm tired. I'm tired of saying it about TJP every week. They're not learning their lesson, Logan. They're not Please hearing us, man. Daddy. They're driving us insane with TJP promos. I think I'm losing it. Help me, Logan. Travis is gonna get yelly. You know what? You know what can help me, Logan? Tell everybody about the best fucking part of this week's episode. What a what a out of nowhere match of the week caliber match for me. Oh, don't don't you don't you dare be sour. Because that Tony Nese versus Grand Metalik match was off the rails. Um, before the match, we had... Shirt. Before the match, of course, Kristen. Tony Nese was on the mic. He had a promo. Yeah. Let's just say this right now. I've done said this about TJP, and I'll say it again about Tony Nese. This week, he had a, an all right promo. It wasn't as bad as what we've heard in the past, but he's just not that good. He just can't, he doesn't have it. He just doesn't, something's missing. Um, I was happy to see Grand Madalik. I can't in a believe match you tonight. missed the biggest thing I thought you wanted to talk about, about Tony Nese's entrance. They lugered him. They gave him the narcissist Lex Luger's entrance. And I ate that shit up. I was like, oh, they're doing something with him. And every time I see a narcissist gimmick, I, I get a kick. Even with Chris Masters. I liked it a little bit with Chris Masters, but it was nice to see <laughs> something, not just him walking out going, hey, guys, I'm Tony Nese, premier athlete. How you doing? It was just something. You know what I mean? He 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 counted his abs, which was, he has eight abs. 
I'm sure Kristen ate that shit up. Pants were changed. I'm not a big Tony Nese fan. Well, what did you think of the Lex Luger entrance for him, Kristen? I thought it was tremendous. It was annoying. I mean, I, I, I then he talked. And then he, I agree, Logan. He talked, and then that would just shit the bed for me. But the exactly. Lex, as soon as they put a mic in his fucking in, no, the whole fucking Lex gimmick, I was like, ooh. I, I did. I sat there and I'm like, all right, this this can go somewhere, and then he fucking opened his mouth and my my lady boner just went it felt nope. like they yeah. gave him as much time on the mic in ring after this like they would Enzo Mori. it felt like it went on and on for fucking ever and then it was really good to see Grand Metalik back Logan what did you think of this part where they went to a promo but they subtitled it I actually dug this I did too um, it was great I do want to say a little bit more about the match itself yeah, I actually really means, we're getting right into it. Go ahead. I really popped for the springboard arm drag that Grand Metalik did on Tony Nese. This is what you have to give us? Stop with the storylines, though. Give us the action that they got us to start watching 205 Live. Yeah. And the Cruiserweight Classic was so different. We, we've done said this. We've, we've been through this so many damn times. Just this is like this match. It's part of the reason why I'm invested and I continue to be invested and in trying to do whatever it takes to stay a 205 Live Cruiserweight cha- uh, Cruiserweight, yeah, basically as a fan, being a Cruiserweight Championship fan. I Give us more Grand League too, by the way, because uh, he's, he's great. And here's one thing I did not like. Grand Metalik went all the way down to the ending of the Cruiserweight Classic, the last match against TJP, and he's buried ever since. I don't think he was buried here, though. I think this may be the best, and it's sad because he lost, but this may be one of the best they've handled him because he he got all his shit in, and they they let him be Grand Metalik. They gave him that subtitle promo, which we'd never seen. I was going to say, that was beautiful. I I don't think he was buried here. I think, if anything... And I think they definitely noticed the fans getting behind Grand Metalik so much in this match. The most I've ever seen them get behind him since 205 Live. Would you oh, they, as soon as he came out and was like, just interrupted because Nice was sitting there, oh, look at my body, look at this, look at that. It just got really fucking annoying really quick. And then Metalik interrupted him and used to the car go, yeah! What's what stuck out to me? Him. I remember Nice having Metalik in a headlock. And, you know, that's that old school, but it's still in wrestling for the end of time, it'll be. But, like, the... The crowd getting behind the baby face in the headlock to pump him up. That happened, like, really hard. I mean, you never see that in a 205 Live match because they're dead. I just, I really hope somebody noticed. And if anything, I think Grand Metalik, I, I don't know his contractual obligations. I don't know what he's got going. Maybe that may be the reason. But I think he's going to be a guy that goes under the radar when we talk about what to do with the title with Neville that fucking sign me up for Grand Metalik and Neville. Those two would have oh. tremendous matches. That's a, definitely a possibility you could go. You could still have Neville go over at SummerSlam. You know, if it gives me... Gr- I would rather see Metalik and Neville than Tozawa and Neville any day. But that's just my preference. I'm not usually a big Lucha guy. But something about Grand Metalik with me... It, it's also with how they're handling, like we said, the subtitle promo. They're just... They're doing... Even though he lost Logan, I still feel like they handled him with class here. And he looks strong at the end of the day. But the... My spot of the match was that simultaneous, like, baseball slide. It was timed so perfectly. We texted each other off air on Twitter today about it, actually, because we're that big of nerds. But, uh, you know, that was that was the spot of the night, spot of the match. But tremendous match. Unfortunately, I don't see, like, I don't, we talk about enhancement guys like Ari Davari. I don't see this big deal that Michael and Slam Pigs does in Tony Nese. Like, I get it. He's a good-looking guy. He's talented in the ring, but... Maybe an upper mid card enhancement guy, a guy that's could be like a you know taste the title once, but never a guy you put the back of your show on. I would have gone Metalik here. I I, I would have just booked Metalik over. Um, I honestly would like to see next week on Two Hundred Five Live them actually do Grand Metalik versus Neville. Um, they should do it. I mean, what the hell do you have the the to not do it like uh you said that you would love to see that match and and usually sometimes lately we say certain matches that we want to see and then of course look what happens we do Mm -hmm. get them yeah 
the so only, I guess the only reason we kind of hold on to hope to 205 Live is like some of the biggest angles in history of wrestling all stemmed from when a company was at like its lowest point. NWO came off of the Dungeon of Doom era when nobody's watching WCW. The Attitude Era mm-hmm. came off of that horrible 96, 95 era, which almost put the company bankrupt. And you know why that is? Is because like when you got nothing to lose, the bright when things are when things are really this bad, the bright side is you got nothing to lose, and you can do shit. You you, you can hot shot book Metalik and Neville next week and get a pass because you need eyes on. Yeah. Well, of course. So like, I would do that I, I too. Like the Fuck it. They have nothing to fucking lose in this. Go ahead, Chris. Well, two five, like they'll sit there and like give us a match up. We're like, yeah, and then the next week nothing. It's like, why? Why would you do that? Like, they're so good at doing that, so, I mean, I, think, I don't know. Their 205 booking doesn't really make much sense to me, but... I think Vince's track record shows at the end of the day, anything under his brand or whatever, when he's in desperate times, it's usually when he pulls out his best tricks, like the Attitude Era, like, you know, uh-huh. when he brought The Rock back because he was desperate in, like, 2011, please come back, help us out, blah, blah, blah. Like, please, we need help. Anything. I'll do anything. And say what you want about Rock and Cena, guys. That was one of the biggest drawing matches ever in the history of that company. So, the first one. Well, I, I watched it for The Rock. I wasn't a but, very uh, big Cena fan, but I'm like, oh, that's The Rock. So, oh, I, 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 I would love to see them do that, too. I totally agree. I would love to see just out of nowhere, too. You don't even got to promote it. it, it no, they, no, they need things on 205 it. Live, like water cooler matches that get people talking the next day around the water cooler at the office. Hey, did you see the spot? Because that's exactly what happened with this match. Did you ever think last week, Logan, we would be like DMing each other, not even doing a show, talking about how great the Tony Nese match was? They need to surprise people like this more. Yeah, and uh, to me, like this Tony Nese uh, Grand Metal League match was uh... – like, I have a top three matches of the week that I, like, in my head I do. And this was one of them. Tony Nese and uh, Grand Metal League was on my top three matches of the week. And uh, another match that I picked was the on NXT, the La- Aleister Black and um, yep. Kyle O'Reilly. And then uh, what was the third one that I said? Nakamura and Cena. No, it was Chad Gable and oh, Rusev. Yes. Yeah, that was another good match. We'll get to that on regular slam things guy. this week. I can't wait to get Michael's opinion on that Chad Gable match. Um, That's another guy that I think uh, maybe Chad Gable to the cruiserweight uh, cruiserweight division would be good. Well, you saw. That, did you catch Bring It to the Table this week when uh, your boy Corey Graves he flat out pulled a Logan. He said, "I want Enzo more in two five live." Did you catch that? Yes, I did watch. That I know and, you popped uh, in your living room. You're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I popped in my bedroom, and then when he said, I do not like Enzo Amore in real life, I popped as well. Don't do it, Kristen. I know you're just biting your tongue when he said he popped in his bedroom. Anyway, that was... No, I wasn't going there. I was behaving. Can we give a shout-out to the tassels on Grand Metal League's outfit? Yeah. I liked them. He mixed it up. Um... It was it that was a uh, build up then with the Akira? It was like a backstage promo, I think, with Neville and what's her face? I don't know her name. There was like three of her. Yeah, moments. Neville. And she asked him, Who do you who would you like to win the match tonight for the main event? Which was Ari Davari and Akira Tazawa. Is Neville okay? And he looked a little sickly. He looked pale and like he, had I don't think he looked kind of <laughs> pale. I thought I was the only one that noticed that. No, so I'm glad. Apparently not. Did he get bit by a zombie and like he's just dying slowly? What's but wrong with that? She was Apple like, lately? "Who would you like to see win the match tonight?" Oh, he no, forgot his spray I tan. Want... That's what it is, Logan. No <laughs> spray tan. I don't want anybody to win. Whoever's going to win, and I know that's a horrible impression of him. I'm sorry. But that was a great promo. But he was no. like, "I don't care who wins. They're all going to bow before me, anyways." Promo. It was a good promo. I agree. Neville was just. One of those guys, like, you never expected him to actually put on a very good promo, and he does it, and he clicks. And that when you click doing a promo, like, Neville was not just good in the ring, but he's good on the promo. So that's exactly why uh, a lot of people are fans of him, and that's why, to me, he's had this long reign as Cruiserweight champion because he has everything. He has the whole entire package. 
The mm. only thing I worry about is, as great as it is to see a champion with a dominant heel run, I feel like the longer he's going to have that run, it's going to turn him babyface. You think so? I do, because fans can't help themselves. You know I what don't I mean? think so. I think Neville should stay mm-hmm. heel uh, the rest of his career. God, you sound like, never mind, I'm not going to do that to you. That's not nice. Um, it, I, um, I think the, some of the best traits in heel promos is that even if you lose, like Ric Flair in the 80s, even if he lost a match, the next promo you heard him, you would never think he did because he is the most arrogant prick that never admits that he did anything wrong. And, and Neville knows how to play that to, the, to a T. He is the mm-hmm. epitome of how to do an arrogant heel promo in 2017. And I agree, this was a great promo. And people eat it up. You could have you could have had this be a two part promo and take out that PlayStation bullshit from earlier in the show, and I would have just watched Neville <laughs> twice, and that would have been much better than that. Tell us um, how you really feel about that promo, Travis. It was I, <laughs> Logan. I'm sure hasn't even gotten fired up. It's just because we're burnt out on the TJP hate. Here's something though we can't hate. Is it main event time, to Lo- Logan? Finally this week. Yes. For the number one contendership at SummerSlam, which will probably be on the fucking pre-show anyway. Uh, Ari Davari and Akira Tozawa. Davari cutting an in promo, thanking another Iranian Olympian, a different one. Please don't ask me to remember the name, guys, or expect me to in the comments. My bad. Um, it's like 1.30 in the morning. I'm not looking up Iranian, Iranian, random Iranian Olympians. Uh, Logan, what did you think of the opening promo of Davari, the match, the outcome, and where they're going with it in the summer sun? Um, You know, this match was, um, eh. I'd much rather have had the Grand Meta Lake match as the main event. But I will say, uh, Aria Davari, like I said before, he isn't terrible on the mic. Um, at the end of the day, I'm calling it now. SummerSlam, Tozawa takes the belt, takes the title from Neville. That's my prediction. But mm. you want to know one thing I enjoy about 205 Live in the Cruiserweight Championship? Nobody probably thought Aria Davari would be a potential challenger. So going into this match, I know everybody predict that Akira Tozawa was going to win this match, but this is something that like, I am not a fan of giving the whole division an opportunity. I'm, that's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying, let's be honest. The whole entire division should be looked as a potential challenger. Like to me, like a ranking system, a- like they did back in the day on like NWA in the eighties that like a top 10, yeah, like we point out a couple few like a few guys like Cedric Alexander, Akira Tozawa, Neville, Jack Gallagher, maybe. maybe there's like you got to give these guys more individual opportunities and focus on trying to build others in ways that they could could and should be a challenger for the Cruiserweight Champion. So giving a guy like Arya Davari that opportunity to fight for a chance against Neville at SummerSlam wasn't a bad call. And I know Kristen doesn't like him. She's not a fan of him. But to me, in order to to be like, to, to also like add more elements to the division and saying, hey, this guy could be a champion as well. We shouldn't just look at three or four guys. We should look at the whole entire division as maybe, hey, he could do it. He could do it as well. Drew Gulak, to me, could be a very good cruiserweight champion. And I know, again, Kristen's not going to agree. But in this match, Akira Tazab was was way more vicious in this match than I expected. Uh, everyone expected Cedric Alexander uh, to beat Neville. And I think it's time for that chant that has gotten over so much. <gasps> It really and before uh, Kristen has an orgasm, it, I'm calling it oh, now. It did here too, though. This. It really it got over here. As soon as he came out, the crowd livened up, and you could tell that it's over. I mean, he you could even see him going yeah. up to, like, random kids in the crowd, and they were like, the kids were eating that shit up. They were doing the Kristen. Like, I'm not going to – I can't do it like Kristen. can't do it. <gasps> I'm Thank not you. doing but, this like one said, in the morning. I got – can we give a uh, – okay. I liked this match probably more than you, Logan. I liked – I liked Sazawa's selling a lot, but did he just, is it me or did it sound like a 14 year old girl, like hurting her toe or something yelling? Like he was kind of high pitched. And after a while, like, I feel like he did it too much. Like kind of like Iron Mike Sharp, our favorite jobber. Other than the overselling a little bit of the shoulder, which 
And then I also noticed he sold it, and then he, like, he would do a pose, and, like, his shoulder was healed. And then, like, they tried to cover it up with commentary and say it's adrenaline. And that that's fine. That gets a pass. You never know how far your body's going to push you when you're running yep. on adrenaline. It's like, no. Stop but, it. Yeah. You know he's not hurt. Yep. You're not trying to fake kayfabe. I get it. But And and, and kudos to Corey Graves on that. He, he And that that's part of the reason why Corey Graves is just so damn good is because when he sees that kind of stuff, he knows how to like transition into trying to save it. You know what I mean? And right. It's like fuck. You didn't just see that his shoulder is completely fine. You never know what your body's going to do when there's adrenaline pumping through you. And it's like, I see what you did there, Graves. Well, we know well, like please. they get fed Graves. lines in their headset from like agents and maybe Vince back. Oh yeah. They, someone's back there's like I adrenaline. Don't think, I don't think two hundred five <laughs> live actually does that. I think. Uh, they let the the, the fly. announcers go with it. Just on the fly. I that's, think, man, that's I'm telling Graves you. Graves doesn't need anybody to tell him. Yeah, I mean, but the see, guys in the announcers' headsets, it's been like that forever since the '80s, since the birth of that shit. They've always had a producer, and you know, like there's times when that's done right. Like when I mean, people bitch about it now, like it should be how it was. No guys, calm down. It's always been like that. It was just. I guess it was people better at it back then, directing with commentators. You know what I mean? Byron Saxon. Um, yeah, Kristen, what did you think of the main event and the outcome and what they're going in SummerSlam with before we get out of here this week? Because this is, you believe it or not, this may be our biggest episode ever. Monster show this week, guys. Hmm. No, I mean, everyone who's listened to this show and listened to me knows that I am not a fucking Arya Davari fan at all. And I feel so bad I'm going to sound so racist. Because like I said, I actually sat there and kept a note, like a notebook where I was actually like writing down what happened during the matches and like points that I wanted to make. But I actually sat there and was like, oh yeah, Arya Davari comes out speaking Iranian. Then I put question mark next to it Arabic because I don't know what fucking Iran's fucking language is. So for anybody who wants to correct me on that, please do so. I will not be offended. Um, you know, honoring his nation, and like you said, the Iranian wrestlers, which, again, if you ask me to name it, or I would die, guess what, I'd be dead, because I don't know who the fuck it was, but Akira's music hits, crowd goes absolutely fucking nuts. And, and I'm so, by the way, I gotta cut you off, too, we don't want to offend our Persian listeners, because he speaks Persian, I use Google for you, to cover your ass. Thank you, thank you, CYA, thank you, but... Davari, you know, right away tried to get the upper hand because, remember, Tazal was injured. You can't see my bunny ears, but injured. Um, Tazawa pretty much kicked the shit out of Davari right to the knee, and of course the crowd starts cheering for him. Um, Tazawa came back, you know, pretty much the way that I put this, he became the slap chop master, because all you saw was just slap, slap, slap. Yeah. But... Um, and of course he goes for the shoulder, which is hurt. But like you said, there were several spots where he's like, Oh, I'm completely fine. And then, you know, Corey, great way to sell it. Oh, you never know what's going to happen when you've got the adrenaline running through your body. He's pushing through that pain, but you, you think know, he got him, chewed out backstage, Kristen, for that? Oh, I'm sure. But, um, <laughs> you know, got the two count by Davari. Davari keeps going for the injured shoulder, but. The fact that, you know, Tozawa came back and one, two, three, ding, and it's now Neville versus Tozawa for the the belt. Bring it on. I'm actually excited to see this match. Why? Because it's fucking Akira Tozawa. Ha! 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 There you have it. From Slits herself, I would say at the end of the day, we'll go around the boards here, give the show overall recap. Um... I got to give this this episode, uh, I got to give it a B plus too, like I uh, earlier on the uh, the other grading. I, I got to go with a B plus on this episode. It was, it was really good pace. Totally, di- it feels like night and day. Like I'm watching a different wrestling show from this last week called Two Five Live. But that's I the, like I said, the only thing that kept it from being an A was the Tony Nese giving too much time on the fucking mic. TJP segment in general. I think anytime a whole segment is bad, it takes a lot away from a show for me. Um, but thankfully, the Meta League match was like right after that, so that was a, it was a good way to it's get. Like it. here, let's just segue. And you know what? That, Thank right. God. Maybe they meant to do it that way. Maybe in pre-production they watched that promo and they're like, "Ugh, 
give me somebody from Mexico. You can see them creeping. <laughs> they're just like, they're just like, they call We gotta do Italy. something to divert from us. This is gonna be bad. My man, now also Mr. NXT, Logan, Future Wrestling Podcast. What did you think of 205 Live this week? What do you got? I'll give it a B minus. Uh, but like I said, Akira Tozawa is going to be the new champion at SummerSlam. Ha. Ha. I did a terrible one. Oh, I did like ha. an 80 year old man doing it. Ha. 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 <laughs> Kristen, what do you got on this week's show? Fuck. Oh, God, that was fucking beautiful. <gasps> Oh God! Ew. I want to see them like tour somewhere with like they they have a bus of elderly people at a WWE house oh, show. Which is like, huh? goes up to a bunch of elderly people and they just all do it together. <laughs> I wonder if elderly people will get behind Tazawa. That would be fucking funny. But no, overall, you know, on I guess I'll go. Now I'm gonna seal your grading scale. I'll go A B C D or F. Um, I would have to give it a B plus. Like you said, the only thing that really drew away was giving fucking Tony Nese a fucking microphone and letting him talk that you long. You can't steal my grade. You can't do that. That's I, gimmick infringement. Bitch, I just did. I did. Oh, well. Blitz did it. Deal with it. But. Oh, my God. If I had a drink in my mouth, I would have spit it out just now. Good. I would have made you spit. Awesome. But, I mean, oh. the thing that really drew away from it was the fact that Tony Nese's promo was, ugh, it was fucking cringeworthy. As well as, like, don't get me wrong, I like TJP. I'm probably one of the few who does, I'll admit that. But, oh my god. I, I think I just, like, no, I think more so than anything, I liked the whole fucking, like, video game fucking entrance. And, like, now the whole fucking, like, please stop dabbing and the fucking just giving him a mic for more than like a minute, minute and a half tops is just spelling fucking bad, bad idea for WWE. Other than that, it was really good overall. Fucking Akira Tozawa match was great. Like you said, Davari as, like you said, maybe he is good developmental, like putting people over kind of talent. And I, I did. I liked that. That I would probably give, I don't know. I'd probably have to go either between that one or Grand Metal League for a match of the night, minus Tony Nese talking so much. Um, but more Lex Luger entrance. <laughs> just make it a make, Lex entrance all the way down the ramp and just never give him a mic. Just, never just, give him a mic, exactly. Yeah. Logan! Was, I think other than that, it would have been. I probably would have given it A if it wasn't for that. Logan, I don't mean to yell at you every time I segue. I get excited when it's time to segue to Logan. So I come off like I'm yelling at you, man. But, man, another week. I'm coming off more way refreshed than, unfortunately, this should have been episode 10. It should have been an upbeat, positive episode for 10. But episode 10 made it sound like we hate life. Like, that episode is so bad to review. But, man. Fuck these people. Fuck that Hey, episode. in all seriousness, thanks. thank both of you guys for staying up late. This is, like we said, the biggest cruise control episode possibly ever when it drops. Thank you guys for listening. Logan. Get us out of it. Get us out of here, man. Where can everyone check us all out? And what would all we all do? Just plug us all this this time, Logan. And that was meant to sound as as bad as it did. I mean, my nickname is now Slits or Slam Titties or whatever people are going to refer to me as. I'm so. too tired to plug myself right now. Take it and run with it. Go ahead, Logan. Well, go ahead and check out Travis at Twitter at the uh, Abiki Dicky. DMD. That's not I'm where you kidding. can find me. That's going to take you to some weird <laughs> Japanese porn site, probably. I am not affiliated with that alternate fucking... It's at the it's Hibiki, at the Hibiki DMD. TMD. I can't even get you to do me one solid favor, Logan. Jesus uh, Christ. That's why you don't send a man to fucking do it. No offense. <laughs> Go ahead. Sloppy Logan. Um, and of course sloppy you can Logan? Check, uh, Wait, did you say sloppy you- Logan? Hashtag sloppy Logan. That's got to be something by tomorrow. <laughs> Make me happy, people. Good. You can check out um, Miss March over here. Slits. Sluts. <laughs> whatever you like to call her for the week. This fucking bitch. Listen here, cold cuts. I swear to God, if I ever come near that area, you're getting a fucking throat punch. It's going to be like, come here, Logan. I miss you. Fucker, that's what you get for calling me a slut. <laughs> you know what, Logan? Just for that, Travis, get him two fucking salads. No meat, no extra. <laughs> Fuck you, Logan. 
Oh, I love inside <laughs> jokes. They're tremendous. <laughs> Only us three you. get that. You guys Fine, don't. Fuck that. You can follow me at Miss March 89 on Twitter since I've apparently shut Logan up, which is kind of surprising to do. You can follow Travis on Twitter at the Hibiki TMD. You can follow him on YouTube, Hibiki TMD, on Cruise Control, obviously, Kayfabe Today. I feel like an asshole because I'm forgetting your other shows. Um, That's it. The Drop reset you. button. Reset oh, button. There you go. And eventually, Grapple Listen and, and Logan at Future Wrestling Podcast. Of course, hit that subscribe up and up upstart new show with Broski, our man at first thing in the morning. Hit the subscriber there as well. Man, I feel like you're our Robin Quivers. You know who that is, Kristen? I don't like you right now. But that, like a cool Robin Quivers who's tolerable. Okay, then you're forgiven. Yeah. Okay, because I know who Robin Quivers is, and I'm like, it's it's how she should have been. I'm sitting there at my screen. (laughs) Thank you, guys. Man, Logan, take us home, man. Till next week, I'm out of here, guys. Dirty fucking pigs. Mike here from the Slam Pigs Podcast, reminding you once again to check us out on Twitter, whether it be the Slam Pigs Podcast, whether it be me at Mike the Slam Pig, or whether it be our sister show, The Reset Button. Check us out. Also, you can find us on Facebook at the Slam Pigs Podcast or The Reset Button. And as always, make sure you check us out as a whole on Hibiki TMD.